And they would sacrifice their children, they'd sacrifice their crops, whatever it may be, in order to what? Appease the gods. Now, the biblical writers often do this. Is they take modern language in their time and then use it so that people can understand the concept, but then put a biblical meaning on it in order to understand theology. And so they took this word for a propitiation and appeasement, and they took it to say, you know what, we, there has to be an appeasement of God because there was a wrongdoing. I mean, there's the, the idea of receiving something, compensation, when a wrongdoing is done. If I run into Joe's car, which is possible because I'm a bad driver, I hit his car, and I, I, he's going to expect me to pay for the fixture. Right? And is that fair? Absolutely. So there's a price that has to be paid. So in the same view, when there's sin done against God, there has to be a price paid. There has to be an appeasement. But unlike the pagan gods and the false gods that people have worshipped, God is different in the idea of appeasement. And the way that he is different in appeasement is that unlike like the Greek culture where we see it, the human beings would be able to appease the gods. The thing is, we know we can't appease God. Our works cannot save us. They can't be good enough. They can't do things to make up for the death of Jesus. So we're hopeless in that regard. But the second thing that we also understand is, scripturally, when God brings appeasement, the one who actually brings appeasement is God himself. And here's the amazing thing. He's the one who has wrath and punishes because of sin. But he's also the one that says, I will step in and appease myself so that my wrath will go away so that you don't have to suffer it. You see, that's one of the amazing things. He's both the one who bestows wrath justly, but he's also the one to step in and appease himself so that we do not receive the punishment that we ourselves deserve. You see, one of the things that we understand with this is in the Old Testament, the, the Jews were the covenant people of God during the Old Testament times. In the New Testament, it's Christians. But in the Old Testament times, the Jews had an object known as the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was something that they would carry around. It was a sacred object to them. <clears throat> and Moses was the one who explained how to build it, and they would carry it into battle and in their celebrations and so forth. But... One of the things with propitiation, this word propitiation is associated with a part of the Ark of the Covenant known as the lid or the covering of the Ark of the Covenant known as the mercy seat. And in this, this is when the high priest each year would come and he would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat. And in that, God would see that and recognize atonement and recognize covenant with his people and he would forgive the sins of Israel. Now, the amazing thing that we see here is we see that blood is involved, but we also see that in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, that the people of Israel believed that the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant was the symbolic place where God resided. And so when the high priest came and sprinkled that blood for the atonement and relationship of God's people, what they were actually doing was calling upon God to appease himself. So they weren't bringing appeasement by sprinkling blood, but they were going to the mercy seat, the place where they symbolically believed God resided and called upon God to appease his own wrath against them by covenant. He brought propitiation. And so he was the one who would bring forgiveness to sin. He was the one who would bring atonement. He would be the one who would say, you deserve wrath, but I'm the one who steps in and takes the place for it. He's the one who bestows wrath, but he's the one who appeases it, too. But then we also have to ask, how did that come about? One of the things that we read throughout Scripture is Jesus is our propitiation. Jesus is our appeasement. He's the one who appeases God on our behalf. I mean, have you ever had a brother or a sister or a friend where they did something wrong, and then you would go to mom and dad and say, Mom, Dad... Please don't be angry with my brother. Please don't be angry with my sister. Blame me. I did it. I should have done that. Or maybe your friend did something wrong and, you know, he'd get in worse trouble than you. 
So you say, you know what, I'll, 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 take, I'll take the blame for this one. You know? That's what Jesus does for us. Is that we did wrong before God. But then Jesus steps in and says, you know what? Don't be angry at them, Father. I'll take his place. And this is where we get so much understanding. That we understand that Jesus is the one who takes that wrath upon him. That's why Jesus died on the cross so that when he was on the cross, the weight of the world sins was upon him and he died and God had to turn away from him because he, in his holy nature, had to bestow wrath on Christ. But in that moment on the cross was when God was appeased. That his wrath was subsided. Because what makes God angry and wrathful is sin. And the only way to get rid of God's wrath is to get rid of what? Sin. And when Christ went to the cross, he brought the covering. And when, that's why, just like how blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat, the blood of Christ from the cross covers us. And when we're covered, guess what? Appeasement happens. Forgiveness happens. That's why connection to the blood of Christ is so important. That's why Jesus dying on the cross is so important. But Jesus is our propitiation. This is what the Apostle John says. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, it says, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with our Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ is your advocate. As we talked about last week, he's your defense lawyer. But he's the one who says, I'll be the whipping boy. I'll be the one to take the place. You know, if you're going to take someone, take me. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He said, take me. And God's wrath was upon him. And by his wounds, we were healed. That's the amazing thing that we understand. Is that he stepped in to be our propitiation. He took our place. He, he was our substitute. He was our tag, you're in. That was a huge impact. And the reason why it had to be Jesus is because Jesus is perfect. Without sin, the Son of God. And remember, in biblical view, propitiation always begins and is continued on by God himself. That's why I could never be the propitiation for myself or for you guys. But only Jesus Christ one of the things that we also understand is we also understand God is a God of wrath, but he's a God of love. And that wrath is an extension of his love. But in order for us not to receive the just punishment that we deserve, we understand that God, by his love, by his desire to appease wrath against us, he sent Jesus. Remember, the God of the Old Testament that people say his wrath and God of the New Testament is love. Same God. God doesn't change. That's what the Bible says. He's never changed. Same God. But in this, God throughout the Old Testament times brought about the events to happen to bring about Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Because he loved us and wanted to save us. But the only way to love and save us is to, to appease us, to appease his own wrath against us. The only way that he can appease our wrath is by washing our sins away with, by the blood of Jesus. First John chapter 4, verse 9 through 10, which Tyler read earlier, it says this, In this the love of God has made manifest among us, that God sent his Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. You know what? We think about our sins against God. How many of us go and we sin and we say, you know what? I'm the one who really did wrong against God, so let me make appeasement of him. We don't really think that way. And in fact, sometimes we try to justify our sin. We rationalize it. But instead, or when someone does something against us, we say, well, I hope they come and apologize to me. You know, that's how we think. It's human nature. But despite God, God is the offended party here. He's the innocent party, and he says, I'm offended, I've been hurt, my son had to die for this, but instead...